Hey guys, welcome to the Whimsical Workshop. In this video, we are going to start month one of the Snippets Block of the Month that we are doing with Studio E Fabrics. This is our block. Let's get started. All right, so we are ready to start off with block one of our snippets sew along. And in this project, all of the fabrics are ombre, which look like this. So they're very, very pretty. Um, but I designed this block of the month especially for those of us who do not like to fussy cut ombre fabrics. The whole project, except for a couple of the borders, you're gonna just cut the fabric as, as if it wasn't ombre, but the ombre will fall into the quilt. You'll see it as we piece it. So for block one, I'm actually gonna go over how we cut the fabric as well as how to piece the blocks. So we are ready to start with block one of our snippets block of the month. Before we get started, I wanna talk a little bit about the project and how the pattern is set up, and then we're gonna jump in and start cutting our first block. Uh, these are free patterns that we've done for Studio E Fabrics. I will put a link below of where you can download the pattern. Uh, and it is a six month block of the month, and we're gonna do a video each month showcasing that month's block or in the last video's case, we're gonna put the whole thing together and show you how to fussy cut the borders and get your quilt finished. So on the patterns we have on the front, we tell you what fabrics you need and how much. We give you a picture of the actual block we're making for the month. And then down here is a thumbnail of the finished quilt so you can see where we're going. Uh, on the next page, what we do is we have an entire swatch page for you. So you can reference the names on the cover and go through here and you can label them um, A, B, C, D, however you want to do it. Uh, especially if you're not using our fabrics, you may want to just create your own swatch page to follow along. The color letters, the A, B, C, D assignments, are going to be the same throughout the whole series of patterns. So whatever fabric A is in month one will be fabric A in month three. So that will make it a little easier and less confusing as we go along. Once you have all of that, we get to the cutting page. So in month one, we're gonna cover how to cut the fabrics. Uh, we won't cover cutting in every video because it's gonna be the same unless there's any fussy cutting, in which case I will showcase it at that time. So we're gonna go over that. Once we get everything cut, I'm gonna show you the steps on how to put block one together and you will see how fun and easy this project is. I hope you join us for the entire six months. Um, so let's get into the cutting. Okay, so once you have your fabrics pressed and ready to cut, we need to put them in the order in which they um, are going to be cut. So what we've got for the first month is we, we have fabric A, which is sunflower, B is red, C is white terrazzo, D is blue bonnet, E is ultramarine, F we have reef blue, G is fuchsia, H is malachite, I is lemon lime, and J is black licorice. So now that we have these in the order that we're going to cut them, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, as you can see, these fabrics are all ombre. They start with a dark color on one end, go to a light in the middle, and then go to a dark on the other side. They also varied the print on the fabric. So it's very packed here and it gets very scattered in the middle and then it goes back to packed on the other side. So most patterns like this, you would fussy cut the uh, ombre fabrics out so you could use light sections and medium sections and dark sections. In this case, for the design I did, we are gonna just ran cut these like we would cut normal fabrics and let the ombres fall randomly through the pattern. Uh, and you can see from the uh, quilt image, it looks great, it still looks stunning, but it doesn't have the added step or stress of trying to fussy cut these fabrics. And that was my goal with this project, was to show you, you could use ombre and not worry about where the ombre falls. So we're gonna go ahead and get started with cutting. I'm gonna put these over to the side. Um, another tip that I really like to do while I'm doing these projects is I have these little circle stickers. You can see some of them already have letters on them. I will put the letters on and letter my pieces as I cut them. So then when I go to sew them, I remember what's fabric A, B, C, D, and E. Now in the case of this project, the illustrations you can see here are all color 
the, the as you can see here the illustrations in this pattern are all in color so it is not quite as vital as some patterns but if you're using your own fabric you definitely are going to want to label so you can remember what you substituted for a b c or d so on all right so as i cut i'm going to label so we're going to go ahead and get these all cut all right i'm going to go over the basics of how to cut um, for any beginners that we may have in this group and what you want to do is you want to have the folded edge towards you and the salvage edge away whenever possible because it is easier to align the horizontal line on your ruler to the folded edge than the salvage edge in most cases so we're going to go ahead and do that and we're going to just square off this side and you're going to notice when i cut i always have my hand on the ruler but i have my little finger on the table that way if the ruler wants to slide it hits this finger and it has some resistance so it doesn't slide off my piece or slide out of position. It also keeps your hand away from the edge where the blade is going. And I also keep my hand in the middle of the ruler, not at the end here, um, because it gives me more control over the whole ruler. You could also, if you're short or your table's higher or whatnot, you could start here, cut, and I'm gonna just show you what I'm talking about. You start here and you cut to the middle you do not lift the blade or move the ruler. You just walk your hand up till it's at the second half and you can cut that way. Um, that is another way to do it versus just keeping your hand in the middle of the ruler. Now that we have a straight edge, I'm gonna turn it around and flip it and you could do it so you have this folded edge towards you again. This is another reason why I press my fabrics before I cut them because it gives me a chance to align the salvage edges together and make sure that it's not skewed for coming off of the bolt. It also keeps me from getting weird pleats in my cuts. So for this one, we're only gonna cut one, two and seven eighths inch strip. We are going to be doing half square triangles in this block. And I do use seven eighths inch versus rounding it up. That being said, there is enough here if you wanna round up from seven eighths to two and seven eighths to three inches and square up your half square triangles. Please do what you feel comfortable doing. Um, I just, I hate trimming my blocks. So I always cut it exactly what I want it to be. So that being said, we're gonna cut two and seven eighths. And that's all we have to cut from the fabric itself. Then we're gonna rotate this. And I like to switch from my big, huge ruler to a little small ruler to do my cross cuts because then I'm not fighting with as much acrylic. So I'm gonna go ahead again I'm aligning a horizontal line on my ruler with the edge of the strip and I'm going to get rid of my salvage. So I'm squaring off the one end and I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to cut four, two and seven eighths and four, two and a half inch strips. This is where you have some choices. So I can cut two and seven eighths and two and seven eighths and they're going to both be in the darker range and they're going to be denser and then my two and a halfs are going to be up here i could cut i could flip this over like this and cut you know two really light ones and two really dark ones and get the same thing here it just depends on how much variety you want in your quilt um, over the original sample i just kind of marched up the the strip in this case so i'm going to go ahead and do that here, so two and seven eighths, and two and seven eighths, because yes, I've already made this quilt once. Now we're gonna get to the two and a half. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut my two and a half this way and then turn it and square it up, because that way if I have to come back and cut two and seven eighths for whatever reason, you never know, I still have a two and seven eighths inch strip to work from. So this is two and a half by two and seven eighths, and this is two and a half by two and seven eighths. Then I'm just gonna put these two on top of each other and square them up to be a two and a half inch square. And now I still have this if I need it to cut any additional squares. Maybe I wanna make another block, maybe I need it for something else. Um, we are generous with the fabrics with this one, so you should be okay and not need it but you never know you know crazy permanent marker incident may make you have to do something with it okay so that's how you're going to cut your strips i'm going to go ahead and keep cutting all of these i'm going to fast forward over it so you can see me do it but yet not have to go slow-mo um, and then we'll get into the piecing
we have everything cut for month one. Um, and now we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, you may have noticed the image at the beginning of the video doesn't isn't the same as this. That was because I was using a very old cover that was incorrect, but we have corrected mine with the current one, which is the one you guys have. So this is the block we're making. So now we are ready to start sewing. And what I like to do at the beginning is to just sort of pair up what's going to what. So H and I are getting the J's. Then we have the bigger C's. Oops, sorry. Bigger C's, bigger A's, bigger F's, and bigger B's. These are all the two and seven eighths. So these guys are all gonna go together. And then these guys all get sewn into the four patches later on. So now we know what we're working with. So first we're gonna start doing our flip and sew on these. And I'm gonna show you how I like, I'm gonna show you how I like to do this in the traditional way. Okay, now that everything is cut, let's go ahead and start putting our blocks together. The first two units are unit one and unit two, and they are using fabric H and J. This is four and a half inches, this is two and a half inches, and fab unit two is using fabric I and fabric J. They're put together the same way, but I wanna walk through two methods on how to do flip and sew to create these square and a square blocks. All right, so let's go ahead. I'm gonna show you the first method, which is the directions in the pattern. And so how you're going to do that is you're going to take your two and a half inch square and you are going to take a ruler. And I like to use a ruler with a 45 degree line on it because it makes it easier to align it. And I'm gonna align the 45 degree angle against the square and the edge of the ruler is gonna go on both points of the square. And then you just draw a line from point to point. Now to avoid stretching your fabric, I recommend starting in the middle and working out to each corner versus trying to start in a corner and going straight. So there is the square marked. Then you would go ahead and place the two and a half inch J square on the four and a half inch I square and you would align the edges, okay? And then you're gonna sew from that point to that point to create the flip and sew and then this guy can flip out. That's, that's what we're trying to get to. So you can do that corner first then we're going to sew this guy on second and so that it looks like this. So we have two corners. Now we need to trim off and press open these two side triangles and you can trim it two different ways. You can trim it. I've already started this one here. You can trim everything from behind. So you're going to get rid of everything or on um, this example. I left, you can trim the center piece out, leaving a quarter inch seam allowance. You can leave this back square to use to line everything up as you're piecing your block together. Both methods are acceptable. I would just recommend doing one or the other through the whole quilt. Um, in this case, I prefer to cut the excess fabric away from the back so I don't have added bulk in there. Once you've done, once you've trimmed these, and you can use a, well, let's show you the ruler. Take a ruler and you lay it on the square a quarter inch away from the seam allowance. And you can just trim that off. And then you will repeat that on this side. Once we have this trimmed, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna press these two open. Okay, once I have trimmed these, I've gone ahead, I've pressed these open. So that's the back, that's the front. Then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna lay a square on here and again sew from point to point, lay a square on here and sew from point to point and that is gonna get us this shape. Then we're gonna go ahead, we will trim these again and press these open and that will make the square in a square. And so you need to make four of fabric J and eight of fabric H. This is unit one and this is unit two. Now I wanna show you a second way you can do this flip and sew method that comes out, I think, a little more accurate, but it does require a special ruler, so therefore we don't write it in the directions that way. And how you would do that one 
is you would take a square, and this one already has a faint line there, but I'm gonna mark it a little bolder here. And I'm using a folded corner clipper. A lot of people have these in their stash already. And you can align it on the square. You can align the top edge of the square, the side of the square, the bottom of the square, this, this line right here, and the diagonal. And then you're gonna go ahead and mark your line. So it looks like that. So now you're gonna see there is a large triangle and a small triangle, and you are still gonna sew from point to point, but now your quarter inch foot will ride along this edge. So you would go ahead and place this on the square. Again, you're gonna sew from point to point, but you're gonna let your quarter inch foot ride along this edge right out here. And it's a much more accurate way to do flip and sew. This will match out perfectly with the back trying the back square because when you're only drawing from point to point, you're only using this as a reference point and this is a reference point. When you're using this ruler to mark your squares, you're using one, two, three, four, five reference points, and that makes it a much more accurate line and as long as you put your quarter inch foot on that line when you sew these they will flip out much much more accurately so then once you've done this side you would repeat and do the other side just like we did with the other technique you will trim these off and now in this case if you don't want to get rid of both pieces you can just cut this inner piece out and you would cut right on the drawn line because you want to leave a quarter inch seam allowance and then when you press this out, again, you see it matches. But if it didn't match, if say, let's say it was like this, a little bit off, I'm, I'm rolling this down so you could see it. Even if that was a little bit off, when you go to sew your next piece to it, you would just use that back square as an alignment. Both methods, both methods are acceptable. Just I would recommend if you're going to cut everything away do that for the whole quilt or if you're going to trim out just the center i would do that for the whole quilt so once you've sewn those two and trimmed them and pressed them then you're ready to do the last two squares and then again you're going to trim and you're going to press and then there is the unit and you can see this one i didn't trim anything out of the back and you can see just how lovely those corners are matching up with the flip and sew. Either method works. And um, I just like to show both because I, I feel this is more accurate, but the other method also works as well. So that is how you're going to do your unit ones and your unit twos. And again, you are going to need eight unit ones and you will need four unit twos. And then we're gonna set those aside. Next up, we're gonna work on half square triangles. And we're going to show you two different methods for that as well. Get rid of all this junk here. Um, and if anyone was wondering, I'm using a Frickson pen to mark my lines. I like to use these on the back side of my fabrics. And I'm using a Bowen chalk pencil on the darker fabrics. I like the Bowen chalk because there's a little ceramic in it so they don't tend to break. These, everything I'm using, I will link the tools below the video. So if you need them, they're all available on our website, The Whimsical Workshop. Okay, so let's show you two methods for half square triangles. All right, so first we're going to need to make eight of these, eight of these, and we will need to make, as I, you can see, I've already made them, 32 of these. So those are the half square triangle units we're looking at. And I'm going to show you two different ways to do them. So first is the traditional method that is written in the instructions. So to mark this, again, you are going to go from point to point. And to do that, I like to use a square ruler that has a 45 degree line. I align that with the square. If I don't have one of these, and I draw my line again. I start from the center and go out to each corner so I don't stretch my square. So now I have a center line and I'm going to go over to the machine and I'm going to put this on the edge of my quarter inch foot and I'm going to sew a quarter inch away on either side of the line. And that looks like this. So once you've done that, 
you can come back in and you just cut on the drawn line. So there is the square and then that was the line and we've cut them apart. And then we're ready to press and I would press these towards the dark. And that will give you two half square triangles. Okay, so you get two half square triangles from every square over here. Now these have these little dog ears here and I like to get a nice sharp pair of scissors and I trim them off. And you do not want to leave dog ears in your piece because when you're sewing and you hit those, when you're quilting or even piecing, you hit a dog ear and your needle jumps and your seams are a little bit off. So get rid of the dog ears. So that is method one to make half square triangles and that is the way the pattern is written. Now another way you can mark these half square triangles, there's actually two ways. I'm gonna show you both. Um, get these all back in order. So the first method is if you have this ruler, you can mark this the exact same way that we marked the flip and sew. You can align the top and the edge and the diagonal. Because these are 7 8 they are not going to match one of the printed lines, but they do match that diagonal and those two edges. And you mark one side, and then you can flip it around, align it again, and mark it again. And now when you take this over to the sewing machine, you are going to sew on each of the drawn lines. So that's another way to do it. Then there's another ruler out there, and I'm just going to use this one. This is, I don't know if it has a name. I'm sure it does. It is the Creative Grids RSMN 15. It's this weird little ruler, but it has the, the end is squared. So you can align the end of the ruler with the square on the back. And I like to eyeball that it is hitting here, that the center, this corner is right in the middle. So this isn't quite as accurate to me as the other ruler, but it, it's really handy to have because you can mark the one side and you just move your hand out of the way and you can mark the other side. So you can do both sides at the same time, okay? And then you can take this over and you again would just sew on the drawn lines. So we've done that. So here it is sewn. Here it is sewn. And then we're going to go ahead again, same thing as the other one. You're going to cut in the center. You have two half square triangles just like that. And then we're going to trim away our dog ears. So that's how you're going to do the half square triangles for the block one. All right, so we have our unit ones, our unit twos, our unit three, four, and fives, and then all the square, two and a half inch squares we cut in the beginning. So we are now on to making unit six, unit seven, and unit eight. And so how we're gonna do that is unit six, we're gonna use, we're gonna make four of these. So we need four Bs and four Es. Now here is, here's my Es, okay? They go just like the fabric, they ombre. So you can choose for unit six to just use the darker ones, or you could take two dark and do two lights for the unit six and mix them up. It is totally up to you. It does not make a difference on the look. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and use the two dark ones, the Bs. We don't need these right now. So we have these two, and then we have unit three. We're making four of each of these, four of this one. All right, so there's unit six. Unit seven, same thing. We're going from dark to light. You can choose to pick them up, mix them up. It's totally up to you, but we need 16 of these. So four, eight, 12, there's 16 of those. And then 16 Gs, again, dark to light. So you could flip this so the dark and the lights mix. I think I might do that this time just to see what it does. And then we need 16 um, of these guys here and 16 here, so that's 32. So 2, 4, 6, 8. So I'm going to take 8 light and put them there. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 
an eight here. It, it is so random. It really doesn't matter, but I am mixing some of these up just so you can see what it looks like. All right, I don't... And there we go. So that's that unit. And then we have four of these, four of these, eight of these, one, two, three, four. And those go like that. So I'm going to go ahead and get these sewn. I'm going to come back and we're going to talk about pressing them. I have the top rows of unit six sewn and the bottom rows of unit six sewn. And so we are gonna press both towards the solid square. Now, when you go to sew these together, here's a little tip. This side has a seam and this side does not. So I like to start on this side and work my way up to the seam versus getting caught right there with my sewing. Sometimes the needle will jump and doesn't like to play nice. So I do start here and sew down. I'm gonna press both towards the solid square. Okay, and then once we have these sewn, or sewn, once we have these pressed, there we go, we're going to go ahead and sew those together, and you are trying to make sure that this, well, you're trying, you need to make sure that the needle goes through that intersection right there, so that when you open this, you have a nice center point. Um, if it's a little off, it's not the end of the world because, again, you're going to quilt this and wash this and do all this other stuff. And on this one, we're going to press all of them up towards the B square. There you go. Another option is if you don't want to have some bulk there is you could press the seam open, and I'm going to show you how to do that. This tool is called a strip stick, and you can order those on our website. This is the travel size, and then we have an 18-inch size. It makes pressing seams open a snap. So you just lay your piece on the stick and you get the end started and you take the edge of your iron, the nose of your iron, and you just see how it just pops it right open. And then you have a nice flat seam with no bulk in the middle. Um, so I think for me personally, this is going to be a lot nicer to quilt over. So I'm going to go ahead and press these seams open. That does not mean that you cannot press it to one side. And if you do press it to one side, I would press, I'm going to mark up my picture here. I would press, so here's unit one, unit seven. I would press up towards the B square, down towards the G square. And the same thing here, I'd press up towards the, or down towards the A square. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew all of these together and get them pressed so that we have our unit six, our unit sevens, and our unit eights. They all look the same, they're just different colors. Do be really careful about which color square goes against the color of the half square triangle and which square goes against the white. Um, that is the, the biggest thing with this is you don't wanna flip the colors and accidentally have this guy here because then you got to take them all out and do them again and that's not fun so let me go get these all sewn and then we'll be back and ready to assemble our block ones all right so we have all our units done so unit one unit two then we jumped up to unit six seven and eight so now we're ready to build our block ones we're going to make four of them I like to use a large square ruler as a tray to carry this over to the sewing machine, but I want to lay it out here and make sure that I have everything just the way I want it. So we've got to do four of each. There's four of those. One, two, three, I must have five here. Hang on a minute. One. Oh, there it is. One, two, three, four. Yep. So we've got those two, and then this guy goes right in the middle. This is the easy part, because it's very obvious how this goes. Then we've got unit six going up here, and the red is in the corner. And this is where I'm going to double check. The red goes against the color. The dark blue goes against the white. So that is correct. And then down here, we have this again, blue in the corner. And this time, it's yellow on the outside, and red is touching the yellow. So that's good. And then we've got these. We need one, two, three, four of these. 
the pink is in the bottom and the blue is going with the blue because we're going to have a chain of blue running. One, two, three, four. So there you go. You can see it's like it's starting to create my diagonal rows. So you can really look at this and figure out if um, you know you have something sewn backwards or flipped or you know it happens to the best of us. It happened to me on the first one of these. I actually flipped the star points on one block and we didn't catch it till late. Um, so you know, just double check everything. This looks like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew these into rows. So I'll sew this row and this row and this row. I'm going to press all of my seams open because I've already started doing that with this center seam. And there is a lot of intersections that are going to make your seams bulky. So at this point we will go from the rows, press these seams open, and then the blocks will press these long seams open. So let me get these sewn. I'll show you a little bit of the pressing and then we will be done with our block one. All right, so we have our three row, our, all our units sewn into the rows. There's um, the top, the middle, and the bottom. And now I'm gonna show you how to press these and then we're gonna sew the rows together to make the blocks. So just like we did on the center seam, we are going to press all of these open. Now I showed you earlier the smaller pressing stick. This is the larger one. Um, again, both of those are available on our website. I'm going to bring my iron over to this side. And so how you use the pressing stick again, and this is why I like the longer one sometimes, is you can do multiple blocks in a row, is you start opening the front with your finger, or a purple thing works great, put the nose of the iron in, and I just sort of press the back, or press, I just sort of hold or pinch the back of the seam to keep the seam vertical or upright, however you want to say that. And so again, I can just move down and I could do the third one as well um, if this wasn't hanging off my super minuscule tiny ironing board. And then we're just going to slide these guys up and do it again. And I do, I like pressing seams open um, so that the back is flatter and it's easier to quilt. Now pressing a seams to the side would make it a stronger seam. So it is a, uh, a call, I guess, on your part, which way you'd like to go. If you are going to press the seams to one side, um, let me get these pressed out and then I'll show you which way I would do that. Um, basically, I would press these going this way, this going this way, and then that one going that one going that way because it really isn't going to matter which way you press them so i would do it like you do quilt blocks in a row so one going one way one going the other way and then that's going this way and then those seams would nest in the middle so that is pressing those open i got one more here let's quickly press this guy open and then you're ready to press your rows pre uh, press <laughs> then you're ready to pin your rows together uh, and make your quilt blocks, which we need four of these. This is four of block one. So let me lay this back out how it goes. Like that. And then that one goes like that. So here we have it. Got it sideways. Ah, uh, here we go. One, two, three. And then here it is sewn. I have not pressed these seams, so I'm going to show you how to do that. And again, it's the same thing. This is another reason why I like the longer stick. I can do that whole seam at once. So again, we just sort of start it open with our finger. And I pinch this back here so it's vertical. And I just work my way down. I did not like pressing seams open before I had this tool. Um, and now I really don't mind doing it at all because the the, rate, the tool has a radius to it and it help, gravity pulls the seam down and sure makes it a lot easier to press. All right, so there is that one. And then once I do press it open, I do like to flip it over on my ironing board and give it just another good pressing to make sure it's nice and flat. 
Um, over at my ironing board, I'm actually using a wool pressing mat, and I have to say, I can definitely tell what I'm pressing over here versus over there on the wool pressing mat. So here we go. These are all the block ones done for month one. Um, I hope you have enjoyed watching me put this block together. Again, this is the snippets block of the month that we partnered with Studio E Fabrics. It is a free pattern, which I will link below so you can go download a copy yourself. Um, and we will be back next month with block two. I hope you'll join us. So as always, I thank you for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe and hit the bell to be notified each time we do a video. And we'll see you next month. Happy sewing!